Do I regret getting the CISSP cybersecurity certification too soon? That's the million dollar question. If you're watching this video, chances are that you're fairly early on in your career, either just starting out or maybe you have a few years of experience. Even if you've been in the industry for a little bit, there's definitely some relevant information in this video, so make sure you keep watching. So first off, if you aren't familiar with the CISSP cybersecurity certification, it stands for the Certified Information Systems Security Professional, and it's basically considered the gold standard when it comes to cybersecurity certification. Employers everywhere are interested in having staff members who are certified so that they have a little bit of assurance that you're a well-rounded professional. Some industries or companies even will require the CISSP in contracts or statements of work in order to fill certain job roles. If you don't know already, I'm a CISSP certification holder and have been for some time now. I definitely recommend checking out my video on how I passed the certification exam in two weeks if you want the most effective and efficient way to prepare. Anyways, the big issue with the CISSP for a lot of people is that they don't have enough work experience to cover the certification requirement. The actual requirement is five years, but there's ways that you can get a one-year waiver knocking that experience requirement down to four years of experience. The vendor ISC Squared has something called an associate of ISC Squared where you can sit for the exam before having the experience and then you have a certain amount of years to actually get the experience that you need after passing the exam. I also have a video outlining the whole associate of ISC Squared process, so check that video out too. Personally, I'm one of the people who decided to take the certification exam early. At the time, I had just finished my master's in information assurance and cybersecurity, and I was working in the defense industry where there's a mandate called the DOD 8570. The mandate basically is the authority on certifications that you have to have in order to fill certain job roles in that industry. So if you go to Google and you search for DOD 8570, you'll get a bunch of different links that have the chart, but this is the official chart here. And you can see there's IAT levels, there's IAM levels, and a few other different categories of levels. Basically for the levels that have different levels, so level one, two, and three, these boil down to your overall responsibility. So a level three will have a lot more responsibility and typically more experience than a level one. And you can see there's different certifications in here. The CISSP or the associate actually covers a bunch of different levels. It's important to note that the mandate doesn't care if you pass the exam without the actual experience or if you're fully certified. They just care that you passed. I bring that important point up because a lot of times people believe that just by passing the exam, that you're gonna get all these amazing benefits, just like if you were officially a CISSP certification holder. And that's just not true in most cases. Anyways, I found that since I was only around two years of experience, it was fairly challenging to prepare for the exam because a lot of the information was new to me. One benefit that I personally had was that the cybersecurity department where I worked and the defense industry itself really focuses on best practices and security requirements that can be directly linked to the CISSP common body of knowledge. That definitely made it easier to understand things that are correct versus incorrect because I was living this stuff on a daily basis. I can tell you with absolute certainty that if you aren't in an environment like that, you're gonna struggle without enough experience. There's just so much to learn and understand if you wanna pass the exam. I can't really tell you what my overall score was because they don't tell you if you pass, but a pass is a pass. Now you might be sitting there saying, wow, you passed the exam and I bet the money just started flying in. Wrong. Sure, I received some congratulations messages from my managers and coworkers, but it wasn't like I got promoted on the spot or got a huge pay increase. I left that job not too long after passing to leave the defense industry, and frankly, the associate of ISC Squared didn't do much, if anything, towards my next role. Honestly, my master's degree meant much more because I'd actually received it. I switched jobs again after about a year, and I still didn't quite have enough experience to qualify for the CISSP, but this time, I went back to the defense industry. It definitely had a little impact in that role, but my experience mattered more. Unfortunately, most HR departments are gonna use years of experience to break down different pay grades and salary ranges. That means that if I had the CISSP, it could have helped me in that pay range that I was offered, but it wasn't gonna bump me into that next level. I stayed in that job for a while and I became CISSP certified about halfway through my time there. I really didn't start to see benefits until I changed jobs a few years after becoming certified officially. Since I became certified, I've changed jobs twice and had good pay increases as well as better roles being available to me. The fact that I really want you to zero in on is that my years of experience did the heavy lifting and the CISSP gave me that little extra in the job market. With that being said though, 
Do I regret taking the CISS piece so early and before I had the actual experience requirement? If you're getting value out of this video so far, make sure to leave a like so that YouTube knows this content is helpful for other people. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you get notified when new content drops. Last but not least, check out the description for more resources related to this video. All right, let's get back to the content. I can honestly say that I don't regret it given the industry that I was in and the environment where I worked that focused on best practices. Being able to max out the DOD 8570 is very important in that industry, but if you work in some other area, it's really not worth taking the exam early. Sure, you can have one more thing accomplished and then the endorsement process is a lot easier, but there's way better ways to spend your time that are gonna result in immediate benefits when you aren't working in the defense industry. Let's take a look at a few job postings so that you can see how much emphasis employers put into the CISSP, especially at the more entry level or early career type jobs. So I went to Indeed.com, and this is a popular job searching platform here in the United States. And I searched for CISSP and entry, so that way it looks for those keywords. And I grabbed a few of these. So this is the first one, it's from IBM. If we scroll down here, we can see a little bit more about what they're looking for. So this kind of job is really tailored to people that are coming out of a degree program or that don't have any experience. And they'll list some different experience requirements in here. Keep scrolling down here. We're really looking for any kind of certification listings that they include. So this kind of knowledge is really foundational knowledge. We're looking for somebody again, that's going to be entry level or beginning their career. Now, it is kind of weird that they list this in an entry level job, because if you're looking for somebody that has no experience, it really shouldn't be on there. But these are preferred. So these are not required. These are just preferred. So they might get some people that are switching over from IT or help desk, or that bring some of that experience to the table, but it's not a requirement. This is the next one. It's for Bell Textron, and it's an entry level engineer in cybersecurity. So same kind of role. We'll scroll down here and we'll look a little bit more. So again, this one is in the DOD arena. Okay, so this is gonna be similar to kind of the role that I had when I was in that area. So we are gonna most likely see, yep, we see a DOD 8570 requirement. So Security Plus, CISM or CISM, CISA, which this should be CISA. That's kind of a, a spell, spelling error there. And CISSP. So again, this is because they're trying to actually fulfill a DOD 8570 requirement. And you can see this is level two. So you can reference the DOD 8570 chart and see which certifications will actually qualify for that level. The next one's with Lockheed Martin, which is a defense contractor. This is an entry level job. And with defense contractors, you can pretty much count on that they're gonna have 8570 requirements but they do tend to have the most job postings, especially at the entry level, because they just have the most requirements that they actually have to maintain for compliance. So if we scroll down here, yep, and right there, right away, DOD 8570 requirements, so same kind of requirements, Security Plus, CISSP, or equivalent. Now, typically, they are going to list the level that that applies to from the chart, but they didn't do that in this actual job posting. And then it brought an IT director of information security role in here, just so you can see this as well. So if we keep scrolling down here, we're looking for any kind of certifications that are listed. And right there, they prefer those certifications. So even on here, they don't list it as a mandatory requirement. It's a preference, but you can basically count on higher level job postings, like a director level posting, or a CISO level posting, maybe even senior level and management jobs that are basically gonna require it even if they don't say it. So it's a good idea to have that on your radar as you get more experience because it is going to open up those higher level job opportunities for you. Question of the day, are you planning on going after the CISSP? If not, which certification is next for you? Let me know down in the comment section below. Look. Ultimately, you can do whatever you want because it's your career, but I encourage you to really consider the information that I gave you in this video. My goal is to help guide you to the best path and hopefully prevent you from making mistakes that I've made or that I've seen others make. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.